Hey, what is going on guys? Welcome to Flat Tutorials. This is the UI series and this is the, uh, this is the second episode of the UI series. And in this episode, we're going to talk about the Rect Transform. So, if you, go, if you go into the Unity and you have used Unity for a while, you kind of know that every game object, every single game object used to have or still do have, still have this transform component. Now this transform component controls the position rotation and the scale of the object all right so and this is not just for the 3d objects if you create 2d objects let's say create a sprite and i'm going to choose a sprite right here uh, we still do have a game object uh, we still do have a transform component um, the only difference is this uh, a 2d object just have a sprite render to render the sprite into the in in, in unity or in the word okay it, it, it behaves like same in the 2d components too uh, the transfer controls the position rotation and scale all right uh, but now uh, we have UI uh, elements or uh, elements or components so if you create a UI uh, a UI component or element whatever you want to call it and you create it. What you're gonna notice right at the, right off the bat is uh, um, we have a new component it's called rect transform. That this behaves uh, as same as the transform. It controls the position um, position like this. Uh, the size actually this can uh, this is uh, we're gonna talk about the size later. It controls the scale and rotation. Now the UI elements need um, more than that. I mean, they are a bit different from the normal game objects. Okay, so uh, let's just look up into each of these um, variables. Okay, so position X controls the position X, position Y controls the position on the Y axis, position Z controls the position on the Z axis, right? Now, usually the position Z uh, is left zero, but, uh, but it is not uh, case for every instance. You can go ahead and change it according to your needs. Um, it does not need to be set to zero. Okay, now uh, let's talk about width and height, which is the size, not the scale. Okay, what I mean by that is, uh, is scale, is a bit different from what the size of what scale size is a bit different from the scale. Um, sorry for that. All right. Um, so in a scale, you can go ahead and scale your object, and you can see that the font size and the image is not being um, distorted. The slides image is not being distorted in any way. It is kept the same for the best effect. But on the other hand, the scale distorts the image. Now, what I mean by that, if I scale this object, you're gonna notice that we have some blur and uh, you know some chewy edges, something like that. So it is best to scale. It is best to resize than scale if you're using a GUI element. On the other hand, G, uh, scale is good for flipping the image so you can have a, uh, you can have great animations or something like that if you want size uh, if you're using size then you cannot flip the image the image will not be visible uh, once it is uh, in the negative size so that is one more case okay now let's talk about the pivot now what a pivot is, is exactly like a center point of a game object. Now what I mean by that is that if I create a 3D object, let's say create a cube, all right? There we go, we have a cube. Now if I want to control this object, I have a center point for, a center point for it. Now if I want to change the pivot of this object, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and create an empty game object and I'm going to make the cube child of that game, empty game object. Now, uh, if I want, I can move this game object a bit here, and now the center point is controlled by the parent. 
So now the pivot of this game object is changed if I use the parent as, um, as part of the game object. Okay, so this is about the pivot. Now, the pivot works exactly the same as in 3D objects, except you can have, uh, actually it's exactly the same, so there is no except or but anything like that, but um, you can go ahead and select your rect tool. This circular thing is your pivot. You can go ahead and put it outside of the component, and you can go ahead and use that to rotate your component. So it's going to rotate according to the pivot. Pivot can be placed inside and outside of the geo element for your desired effect. Okay. Uh, well, let me just give you one more example. There you go. Okay. Uh, that's for the pivot. Now the rotation controls the rotation on X, Y, and Z axis. Exactly the same as in 3D objects. All right. The scale. I already told you what it is. Now let's talk about the main thing uh, that people are talking about for quite some time now. Is the anchors. Now, if you look at the anchors, let me just go ahead reset everything okay anchors are these triangle gizmos these are the anchors of an object anchors are um, relative to its parent so what I mean by that if I create a panel so that you can see it clearly I'm just gonna go ahead and create a panel UI panel and I'm gonna resize that panel do something. There you go. I'm gonna put it right here. Okay. Now I'm gonna create a button which is gonna be a child of this panel. Okay. Now this uh, the anchors of this um, geo element, which is a button, is gonna be laid out according to the rect transform of the panel. Because the button, which, uh, which is our zero element, is, um, is a child of that object. So, uh, a button could also, uh, okay, I'm going to talk about that later, but uh, what I mean by that is if you try to drag any of these anchors and try to put anywhere on the screen, you cannot go out of the bounds of the parent rect transform. So, you, you're going to have to be inside of the parent. Okay. Now, uh, if you have all these um, anchors set in the in the middle, or uh, they they are at a fixed value, uh, you are not gonna have any sort of distortion um, in any uh, in the image. What I mean by that is this. Okay. When I resize the screen, what happens is the GUI element doesn't scale and if you want to scale you are gonna wanna have to uh, sorry okay free aspect there you go okay so if any of these anchors are separated in any way the GUI element will gonna scale according to that now what I mean by that is I have just separated them and uh, there's not an ideal way, but just to test this thing, we're gonna play the game or the scene, and we're resize the uh, scene. Now you're gonna notice that the geo element resize according to the distance between the anchors. Now these anchors can be laid out according to your needs. Um, the best possible way that I found, to, uh, the best possible setting that I found for a menu or any idle situation that you want it to be is to put the anchors onto the sides of the uh, of, of your geo element. So what's going to happen is um, the, uh, the geo element is going to scale proportionally. Um, so you're going to have a decent effect. Okay. 
So if you go ahead, I don't think I have to uh, keep on playing the scene just to show you guys. So yeah, I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna show you. There you go. You can see it now. It's being resized. Um, pretty damn fine. Now, uh, also Unity uh, ha Unity uh, has done a great thing. They have the presets, the anchor presets, so you can have the um, the si uh, predefined um, values of these anchors um, assigned to uh, to a geo element. Okay, so let's check on that. All right. So if you go onto the geo element and you select this um, thing, and uh, what you're gonna do is you're gonna go ahead and uh, select any of these presets. Okay. So if I select this, these all anchors are gonna align according to these presets. This is uh, these are the uh, stretch ones. So uh, I think you're gonna use these ones more than um, any other. Okay. So each of these effect, each of these um, uh, the presets have different effect on GUI elements scaling, sorry, size or whatever you want to call it. Um, so if I go ahead and do this stuff to him, you're gonna see that it is moving but not resizing, but uh, not on the horizontal axis. On the vertical axis, it is resizing. So if I choose the vertical one is going to uh, resize only on vertical one, not, oh, sorry, horizontal one, not the vertical. Okay, so that's, so what you wanted to do is you're going to want to go ahead and play with all these settings and uh, try to find out your desired effect that you want your game to have or your scene to have. Um, uh, that's it, I guess, for the rec transform. Um, there's nothing much to it. Uh, oh yeah, these are the uh, two modes that you can use um, in order to control or in order to control your uh, geo element. It's called blueprint. Uh, there are two modes: blueprint mode and the raw edit mode. So uh, these two have different effects. Let me show you what I mean by that. Is I'm gonna go to the button, and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and rotate it. Uh, just a bit. Hold on. I'm just gonna put the anchors in between. Okay, I'm gonna rotate it. Put it in draw edit mode, and I can still scale it while it is rotated in a standard way. Okay. Now, when the raw edit mode is on, uh, what I can do is. Hold on. <coughs> on the raw edit mode, I can go ahead and okay. So let's talk about a bit more about these two modes. In blueprint mode, you can go ahead and um, hold on. Uh, I messed this up. I'm just gonna go ahead and create a new button. There you go. In blueprint mode, you cannot rotate the um, uh, uh, the the geo element using the rec tool. So, if you go ahead and um, rotate it and turn the blueprint mode on, what's going to happen is you can go ahead and resize using the standard rec functionality. Okay. In the uh, also, you can control the pivot and pivot and the anchors according to that just like in the scene view. In raw edit mode um, uh, what's gonna happen is I'm just gonna go ahead and put it in the stand form okay. Um, in raw edit mode if you uh, try to let's just say I'm just gonna put it right here I'm just gonna put the anchors in different positions so I can show you the effect. In raw edit mode, if you try to resize the uh, uh, the anchors or change the position of the anchors, the geo element will gonna move with it. Uh, and uh, like with pivot also. 
So that's the only use that I find of these two modes. Um, so I guess that's it for the rep transform. Hope you understand it um, pretty well. If you did, please leave a like and a comment. Uh, if you if you find this video uh, if you find this video has something wrong, uh, please go ahead and tell me that. If you have any suggestions, please leave it in the comment section down below. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next episode of the UI series. And uh, I guess we're gonna talk about um, the button and some programming about the button. So yeah, I'll see you guys in the next episode. Till then, goodbye. And. Uh, Oh, 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 oh,